Hi, I'm Patrick. And today I'm really excited because we're here at CES 2023 and we're in Mobileye. If you don't know Mobileye, we're going to learn all about it right now, but they're the brains behind a lot of really yes, great are. technology. So yes, let's go. Okay, so here is Barack. He's gonna give us sort of like an insight into all of this cool stuff. I've been like following you guys like on YouTube, some of your presentations at previous CES, so I'm really thrilled to be here and learn more about what you guys do. It's in our car behind the scenes. We won't get into the details because you guys are in so many cars and do so many things. So right, right. lead the way. Right, that's true. So, so excited to have you here at the Mobileye booth at the CES 2023. Thank you for coming. And like you said, yeah, Mobileye is behind the technology of uh, more than 50 autom leading automakers all around the world right. and has been doing that for more than 20 years. So um, maybe I'll walk you through the spectrum solutions that Mobileye has to offer. Um, That'd be great. So, um, so first we have uh, the base driver assist that Mobileye has been doing for 20 years based right. on our um, based on our proprietary computer vision uh, technology, which is the bread and butter of, of, of what Mobileye has been doing for years, uh, which enables us all the cool features that we know, like automatic emergency braking, automatic cruise control, lane keep assist, right? Um, and then the next level is the cloud enhanced driver assist. Basically, right. we're taking all these cool features and bringing them to the next level by um, actually extracting information data from the cloud so that the vehicle knows its position in a centimeter level of accuracy, which yeah. makes uh, all these cool features even more accurate. So even with no uh, visible lane lines, right? Right. Um, the, the vehicle knows where the, when the lane, uh, where the lane marks are, basically. Right. Um, lane uh, traffic, traffic, uh, uh, traffic light and lane association only possible with our uh, cloud enhanced uh, solution. So it knows where the lanes are, like where the, the traffic lights are. Right. That type of thing. So right. So it, it looks like an easy task, but think of uh, easy task. But think yeah. about it, like. How do you really know, how the machine knows which lane rele is relevant to which uh, traffic light, right? So, right? so by getting this information from the cloud, we are able, our vehicle knows exactly which uh, traffic light uh, is relevant to which lane. So is it, this is like the high definition maps that are mentioned exactly. a lot of times when exactly. people are talking about ADAS stuff. So that it means like, it's not like my Google map where I'm like, it's sometimes a little bit off and it's like whatever right. it so knows. Google Maps is based on GPS, right? right. And GPS is, uh, you know, the, the accuracy of GPS is quite you know, meter, which is obviously, yeah. it's not it's not, not sufficient for a safety critical right. system, right? If, you're, have, if we, you're off by a meter, you're on somebody's bumper. Exactly, <laughs> you, don't wanna, you don't wanna get there. So it has to be uh, super accurate, right. a centimeter level of accuracy. Um, and yeah, and this is, you can call it our superpower. Okay, uh, and, okay. And, and, and why is that? It's because uh, uh, basically Mobileye has, uh, you know, our eyes are everywhere. We have agents on the roads already with uh, millions of vehicles that are harvesting data already from all the uh, base driver assist systems. So you're not just like collecting data from one manufacturer. It's all, all of these them. manufacturers you guys are working with. So you have probably the biggest collection of data of any company? Oh, for sure. So we have, so currently we have more than one and a, one and, one and a half million vehicles that harvesting data, uh, uploading this data to the cloud. By the way, important to say that this data is anonymized and we're right. actually not uploading the actual images, but only the semantic uh, data, okay? Mm -hmm. What we call road semantic data, right. okay? So for example, if there's a traffic light here, I only need uh, like uh, a bit, uh, one bit or two yeah. to... Uh... One of the presentations I saw, it was probably from CES last year, and I thought it was really cool because it was saying like, you don't need to collect gigabytes and gigabytes of visual images and data. You can collect like very, very little data. Like if you're, you know, if you have a hundred cars going down the road and they all swerve around something, you may not know what's there, but you know everybody's swerving around it. So you can you can sort of figure out a lot of things based off of the amount of data that you're collecting. Right, and, um, then, and you're bringing a good point because this is the, cult, the, the, the culture part of, of, of the data we collect. So we know 
we know the common speed, for example, because one, right. because the legal speed is one thing, right? right? But then you have what the velocity in which people are actually driving, yeah. in, right? So using this uh, this data from the crowd, we know to say what is the common speed in this specific uh, lane that I'm. Uh, uh, driving in. And I can so. see that being really useful because like if you're coming to a curve or a blind spot or something like that, me as a human driver, I'm going to slow down for that. But you, And you guys can sort of see like That's everybody's slowing point. down. Exactly. So if there's a curvature ahead, let's say in 20 or 30 meters, uh, 30, 100 meters uh, ahead of us, the vehicle already knows that because right. it has its uh, data from the map. So no surprises there, and it can start slowing oh, down yeah. even before, which makes which make the the, the driving experience a lot more uh, uh, smoother and, and and more comfortable. It works for me. And yeah, um, and actually, every, everyone who is taking a, a ride with us, a ride with us in our uh, autonomous vehicle uh, uh, fleet that we are using okay. to test our technology, um, all of them. Uh, the feedback that we get all the time is that it just it feels so uh, uh, natural and comfortable and no you know no evasive yeah. maneuver no sudden braking and a lot of that is because uh, the data is coming from uh, the map of course uh, the data that is coming from the cameras is uh, is also super important yeah. for to to detect uh, dynamic objects that right you, that you don't have from the cloud right the cloud gives us information for static objects like the geometry of the road, right? Right. Um, and where there where there is a traffic light, where there is a traffic sign, and so on and so forth, crosswalks, right? right? And for all the dynamic uh, dynamics objects like uh, pedestrians and uh, uh, vehicles, motorcycles, Cars, yeah. cyclists, uh, all of that. Uh, for that, we have our um, surround vision. If we're talking about the uh, supervision uh, product that we have yeah. right here, we have booth. we have a couple of demo vehicles with a lot of your stuff in it. Do you want to sort of explain like right. some so of the cool let's, stuff? Right. So, uh, so what we have here uh, is mobilized uh, supervision, which is a hands-off but eyes-on solution. Okay. Right. Um, so we have surround uh, vision, meaning eleven array of 11 cameras all around the vehicle so we have uh, four four parking cameras two front facing uh, cameras two side uh, side rear cameras and side front cameras another camera at the back so a total of set of uh, 11 cameras uh, so that the ve so that the vehicle is fully aware of its uh, surrounding yeah um, so What's cool about, what's unique about this uh, product is actually that it, it's, uh, it serves as a bridge to an uh, even higher level of autonomy. And actually, by incrementally adding uh, uh, active sensors, meaning mm -hmm. LiDAR and radar, right. and some more compute power, okay, mm -hmm. you're paving your way uh, to the eyes off world, okay? Yeah. So, so again, this is a this is an eyes-on but hands-off yeah. solution, and it's uh, once you have all the, uh, you can say that it brings you more than halfway mm -hmm. towards towards the eyes-off uh, domain. That's actually a great way of describing it because we always, you know, we hear people talking about hands-off, but the next level is going to be, and it's going to take a while to get there, and it's a lot of effort and a lot of things. But the do eyes-off is a huge. Right, and huge hurdle to get past. Right, and this is why we think that uh, it's a lot more uh, easy to, to to understand and to relate to instead of talking about, about level levels. one, level two. It's like, super confusing, right? Because, and there, what's level two plus? And, and, and there is what's level one? three? Yeah. Is it my responsibility? Is it the machine responsibility? It's not so clear. So in Mobileye, we prefer uh, yeah. to have everything uh, clear. So we we, we divide it into uh, an an eyes off or or uh, eyes on, hands off or eyes. Uh, and looking into the cockpit, it has like the the, the 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 cameras above the below the steering wheel, uh, monitoring the eyes. Is that is so, that correct? So yeah. yeah. So 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 because it's a because it's a, a hands off solution. Okay, you have to monitor the the driver to make sure that he has his eyes on the road, right? right. Because this is the condition for right. uh, for. The, so yeah. So uh, and it's literally measuring the eyes, not. 
I'm looking, you know, like this and with my eyes distracted. It's not right, monitoring so, the head position. It's right, literally so this eyes. is up for the OEM uh, to decide what kind of implementation oh, okay. for driving monitoring system. We provide them the uh, oh, everything that makes the vehicle uh, autonomous and it's for them to decide how to uh, how to uh, implement right. the, the DMS, the driving monitoring system. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it comes it, uh, it it should come with a driving monitor system because it's uh, an eyes on on right. system and you need to uh, make sure that the driver is uh, fully aware uh, of what's going on and um, and uh, and so if we if we want to expand to the eyes off uh, world all we need to do is just add those components of right. uh, of uh, radar and lidar for example by. Right, and so this, yeah. <laughs> so this is an example of a, of a system with radars and lidars, but unlike unlike uh, the uh, the supervision or the uh, chauffeur, the chauffeur is a, a mobilized consumer right. uh, uh, autonomous vehicle. This is another use case, which is, which is the shared mobility. Okay, right. so this is another uh, domain that Mobili uh, is uh, is working on, and here we have the same or similar. Vision on uh, vision system, surround vision right. system, but because this is an uh, this is a no driver solution, right? No it's driver, a, it's wow! A, it's a it's a uh, it's, a, uh, it's a robot taxi. Basically, uh, you get on the app, you hail a ride, vehicle come come pick you up uh, with uh, with no driver. This is uh, this is the solution here, and for that you have to have redundancy, right? So right. If, if when we talked about supervision, the human driver he is the redundancy. He's the redundancy. Yeah. Here, since there or is she. or she, <laughs> so here there is no um, driver, and this is why we have to have another subsystem for sensing. Right. So this is what we see here. Uh, we have here a total of nine lidars. Okay. Wow. So three long-range lidars at mm -hmm. the top. Uh, additional six short-range LIDARs like this body right here, but all around the vehicle, mm -hmm. um, and and also six radars uh, all around the vehicle behind the bumpers, right. okay? So we call that approach, we call it true redundancy, okay? So we have two subsystems, they are independent of each other, okay? Each one is building its own uh, world model, mm -hmm. okay? They don't know about each other, uh, and what it allows us is it, it allows more safety, right? Because right. Uh, when you have two uh, two subsystems, and if you can prove that each one of them can uh, apply all autonomous uh, vehicle application by its own, mm -hmm. okay, then uh, once you have two of them, you're more robust and and, and basically right. more safe, right? So uh, this is our approach through redundancy, um, and, uh, and 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 here we also have additional layer of tailor operation, right? Because because this is a no driver solution, you have to take care of all the age cases, right? Let's right. say that there is a situation that for some reason the vehicle cannot handle by itself. Maybe a policeman is using a flashlight and. Uh, you never know. Right, I so mean, you, never, you never know, and you need adults. to and you need to be prepared, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have another uh, layer. We actually have uh, some uh, compute resources, especially for that, to handle uh, wow. all the all the tail operation. Uh, that it's, uh, and it has this is this robo taxi been in use anywhere? Is it doing like demo rides anywhere? Or? Right. So we have uh, we currently have uh, uh, a lot of pilots uh, going on. Uh, all over the world, actually, right. uh, we have some partnerships that uh, been, has already been uh, disclosed, like uh, with Beep and Holon, uh, and some other that uh, not to uh, not to be uh, not disclosed yet, but okay. will be uh, uh, soon enough. So stay <laughs> tuned. Um, and yeah, and uh, and uh, and we expect to see it uh, in the in the uh, seeable future. Uh, on the roads um, and um, and yeah and you and I can 
hail a ride and it will come pick, you, come up pick you up That's just with no driver. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing sure. about Mobileye today. I encourage you guys, if you haven't already, go check out their YouTube channel. That's where I became like very interested in what you guys were doing, seeing some of the, the test drives like through Tel Aviv, I believe Berlin, there were some drives as well. Right, in Munich. Munich. Uh, um, yeah. In Paris, in Tokyo, in Detroit. And it's really cool because, uh, you know, we talk about like autonomous driving and, you know, sort of like letting the car go through. It's sort of, the, the videos are great. I won't describe it too much, but it basically drives through and you can see like what the car is seeing um, digitally. So go check those out. Thanks for sharing. And uh, we'll, we'll be back here next year to see what you guys have done in the past and the next year. Looking forward to seeing you next year. All right. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you.